All right, so I just got back from a track weekend and I'm gonna do a quick oil change. And I've had people ask me how to do an oil change and to make a video. So I'm gonna make a quick video, how to do the oil change in the GT350 and the newer GT500s. It's exactly the same. All right, here we go. All right, so these are all the materials that you're gonna need. Uh, starting over here, we've got a torque wrench and it's gonna be set to 150 foot pounds for retorquing the wheels. That's what it is for the 350, not 100% sure about the 500, you may wanna check. Breaker bar to get the lug nuts off, um, at least get them started. So you could also use an air wrench, an impact, you know, whatever you want. Right here, we have a ratchet with two extensions with a 27 millimeter socket. That's gonna be for taking the uh, oil filter housing off. Then we've got a 3 8 ratchet with extension, and that's gonna be for taking the oil plug out. Um, then we've got a small impact that I'm gonna use once I break the lugs off and get it jacked up. I'm gonna use that plus the 21 millimeter uh, lug nut tool to uh, run them off really fast. You got your oil filter. This is the last generation, the 2062, uh, but it works just fine and I changed my oil enough. It doesn't really matter. Comes with three O-rings. The small one right there doesn't get used, but you're gonna use the two bigger ones on the housings. 10 quarts of 5W50 full synthetic oil. I use Motorcraft for mine. Then because I'm also gonna do the passenger side catch can, um, I got a syringe. I usually get about 30 milliliters out of it, so we'll see what I get this time. Also an H4 Allen uh, with extension, and uh, that makes getting the catch can off much easier. Then these two things right here are things that I 3D print, and I did that to make my life easier for oil changes. This is an oil filter guide. It fits over the top of the oil filter housing and directs oil out the driver's side wheel well. So you would use it in place of uh, like a form of funnel or some people use cardboard, but this is way better and I'm gonna show you why. And then this is a twist to lock oil funnel. And then the orange things that you see there, those are dust caps to keep dust out and oil in in between oil changes. So uh, I'll show you how this works later. And this oil filter guide here, um, so we have little nubs, one right here, which is gonna go inside the pleat of the steering arm boot. This little nub over here is gonna be uh, held against a metal plate, and I'll show you where all that's at here in a second. And then these little cutouts along the base here, those will match up to parts of the block that kind of bulge out a little bit. It's a very tight fit. This is a really heavy piece of plastic and it should never break. Uh, but if it does, I'll replace it for free. All right, so one thing I did forget to do is I forgot to show uh, me using the breaker bar to break the lugs loose, just half turn, one turn, uh, before jacking it up. So I've got it jacked up now. I've got jack stands on both sides. And I'm just gonna use this little impact with an adapter just to take the lugs off quickly. I like to hold the bottom of the tire with my leg or my foot if it's uh, closer to the ground and that keeps it from wobbling and kind of falling off of the studs. Um, more so in the back than in the front, but it's if you just keep pressure here, it'll keep it from falling off. Going in here, I'll kind of show you where the oil filter housing is. It is right there. So you can see that head right there. That's where the 27 millimeter is gonna stick in. From up top, you can see it's hardly visible. It's uh, right there. Um, so this is a air deflector for brake cooling. That's aftermarket, so you may or may not have that. So disregard that if you don't have it. It would increase visibility a little bit if it wasn't there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to insert this oil filter guide. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, when it's set in the right place, it is gonna save you a lot of grief. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick this from underneath and I'm gonna put it through the hole there and I'm gonna turn it kind of at a 45 degree angle. And so the nub right here is gonna go in this maybe third pleat right here, maybe one over. So 
I'm gonna push it as close to the block that way as I can get. And I'm also kind of pushing down towards the bottom of the car. And now as I'm kind of jiggling it, I'm twisting it counterclockwise. Okay, so now it's fit in the boot right there. And then you kind of heard it click into place. Now, if we go over here, there was a little nub right there and you can see it's being held behind that plate right there. So if you have any question whether it's fit into place correctly or not, you can always open up. There's a trap door right there. You can open up that trap door and you'll be able to see the oil filter housing from underneath. And you'll be able to tell whether it's it's touching or not. I've done this enough times. I know it is now touching. If if this little nub is is disappeared behind this plate, you know you're you're in place. Also, I've pushed as far down as I could go and as far up, and it's it's pretty well locked in place. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna switch cameras and uh, get the 27 millimeter extension and we're gonna remove the oil filter housing. Now that we've got the oil filter guide in place and we also have our oil pan down here, just inside the wheel well, I'm gonna stick our 27 millimeter up here and I'm gonna loosen it. Now, when I loosen the housing, the tendency is for you just to kind of let it drip really slowly. But if you let it kind of sit in place and drip slowly and, and uh, just let the housing kind of sit up towards the block, what will happen is oil will start to come out, kind of make a U-turn around where the oil filter housing is kind of blocking the exit of oil and it'll start leaking out to where the oil filter guide kind of meets up uh, uh, with the block. So I'm gonna loosen this up. So we've broken free and I'm going to bring it back. That was very graceful, very, very graceful. Also important to have a lot of towels nearby. All right, so my oil filter is actually sitting up in there. It didn't uh, come with the housing. So I'm just going to reach up there and I'm going to pull it off. All right. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna replace these two O-rings right here with the brand new ones. So you could use a small flathead screwdriver or you could use one of these little picks. And so I'm just gonna insert it in the side here and hook onto it, pull it off. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. Okay, so those are off. There's a little bit of residue that got left behind, but don't worry about that, no big deal. All right, now that we have the new O-rings in place and we've got the new oil filter uh, set in the housing, we're gonna uh, reattach it to the 27 millimeter socket with extensions and we're gonna stick it back up there and get it into place. And I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth till I can feel the threads are kind of in place. And it's almost like it's on the left side of the oil filter guide. It doesn't wind up 100% perfect. Okay, so I've got it in place now. So I forgot to mention that we need to torque down the oil filter housing. It's written on the oil filter housing in case you forget, but it's 24 newton meters, which just so happens to come out to about 20 foot pounds of torque. So uh, what I did is I am using the exact same 27 millimeter socket with extensions and I'm gonna stick it up here and torque it down. It does not take much at all. So it's gonna take um, a couple turns just because it was, it was a little hard the way um, I was twisting it with my hands and having some oil on my gloves. So that's why we're going around so many times, but the torque of this is not very much. Okay, so we're here at the end. This is not gonna take much at all. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I forgot to mention, for the oil filter guide, because it's made of plastic and it's mating to a metal block, and there's no soft material that's uh, forming a perfect seal against the block, you're gonna lose a couple drops of oil. 
but it's going to be significantly better than any of the other methods out there. So what I recommend for most people is you take a paper towel and you put it underneath where the oil filter guide is and put it down there before you put the oil filter guide in place. And then when you pull the oil filter guide out, all you have to do is pull out that paper towel and you're just going to see a couple drops of oil and then you never have to worry about any oil being on your belly pan and coming out of your belly pan uh, trap door. So to get it out, we're going to do it in reverse. If you remember, we twisted it. Um, so I'm going to twist it clockwise while jiggling kind of up and down and pulling it towards me a little bit and sliding it out the bottom. All right, now I'm gonna clean the oil filter guide up. I do not recommend letting oil sit on this. It's fine if it does, but uh, it's, it's better if it doesn't. I used a specific type of plastic um, that can sit in oil if it has to, but it's better that it doesn't. And I usually hit mine with simple green and a couple rags just to make sure it's extra clean before I put it away. All right, so now we're gonna go under the car with the creeper and we're gonna take the oil plug out. All right, so this oil plug right here, uh, you could take it off by hand or you can just use a 3 8 extension, which is what I'm gonna do. Note the orientation. It's not perfectly at a 90. It's kind of like at a, this nub here is kind of pointing to like a two, 230. You do not wanna go past this little spot right here. You could, you could break it off. Okay, so I'm gonna move my oil pan into place. So now that it's, it's kind of loose, I'm just going to do it by hand. Sometimes um, it's easier to do it with an extension or just loosen it up with the extension. So it's, this doesn't go far. It's, uh, I think it's just a 180 degree turn. Let's see. There's 180. Okay, so now it's kind of, it's kind of off. I'm holding it in place, and I'm going to pull it off quickly. Really, that oil doesn't look too bad. It probably only has be 600 miles on it, but uh, 350, 400 of them are track miles. So I replace the oil after every track weekend. All right, so we're gonna let that drain and then we'll reinstall the plug. All right, so here we are about 10 minutes later, the oil has stopped dripping. And we're gonna reinstall it by hand and twist around and you can note uh, the orientation where it stops just store, short of that stop right there. Do not make the mistake of trying to twist past it. You'll break these little tabs off and um, this just won't fit properly. Um, and then after that, I'm just going to grab a rag and just clean up, you know, the area just a little bit, but uh, pretty much everything went in there. And uh, now we're back up to the top. So before adding oil back into it and draining the passenger side catch can, I'm going to put the uh, wheel back on and uh, lower the car to make the engine bay a little more accessible. Usually this would be the time that I swap tires side to side after track day and uh, check my pads and or change my pads back to street pads if I'm not gonna be tracking for a month or so. Uh, but this time I'm just gonna put it back on. Put my foot there to hold it. So I go in a star pattern when I put these back on. And I don't put them down all the way first. I go back and I just lightly tighten them. And then I'll go back and really run them down. All right, now I'll lower it down and I'm gonna to torque the wheel to 150 foot pounds. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna empty out the passenger side catch can. Uh, the GT500 guys don't have to worry about this. There's uh, drains back into their valve cover uh, automatically with another pipe. Uh, us GT350 guys don't have that. This is an add-on, so if you don't have this, uh, don't worry about it. This is something I added on. They also have a driver side one that uh, some people elect to do, but it usually doesn't pick up any oil. I did not do that one. Um, so anyhow, yeah, I went ahead and wrote H4 hex on there because I always forget which tool I need. So now I just know that I need a, an H4 hex or Allen. And uh, so I usually put that on a ratchet because it makes it easier.
All right, so I'll just show what's down in here. So you kind of lift it up and you can just move it off to the side. So there's a little bit of oil down there. It's not a lot, but uh, I'll drain it out and see how much there is. All right, so that time was a little more than usual. It was uh, 50 cc's. It could possibly be because I didn't drain it last time. Some guys will go to the further step and they'll actually put a paper towel in there and kind of pat it dry. I just get you know the majority of it out. It's, it's gonna get filled up again, so it doesn't matter if I'm leaving two or three milliliters left in it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put that back on now and then we're gonna add oil back to the car. So we're gonna use this 3D printed oil funnel that I make and sell and uh, twists into place so you can be hands-free and use it. The orange things are dust caps so it kind of keeps the excess oil in and keeps dust out in between oil changes. So this bottom one, just like your cap here, twists off. See there's an O-ring there so it makes a perfect seal. This top lid is kind of like a Tupperware lid so I just grab a corner of it kind of peel up and go to the next corner. I just set those off to the side and make sure it's clean on the inside, which it is. The nice thing is this is a big orifice, so you can fit a finger up there. In particular, when you're going to clean it later, you could stick a rag up there. So we'll take off our oil cap. So it's gonna set in at an angle, twist up into place, and that's it. Now that thing is very robust. It'll hold a quart. It's square like that, so it can hold a, uh, a variety of different bottles. All right, so you can see it, it holds the bottle really well. It'll take oil almost as fast as you can give it, so I'm just gonna pour it straight in, and let's see if I can get it to back up at all. Nope, there's zero backup at all. The funnel never filled up, so I'm really just going from bottle to bottle here. So this is also particularly nice if you're pouring from a four or five quart jug. I think they're five quarts, the big ones. Um, I'll make it really fast. And you never have to worry about it backing up on you. The GT500 one is the exact same. Also make a funnel that fits uh, most of the EcoBoost. GT, Mach 1, Bullet, all those. Pretty much anything Ford made in the last 15 years. We've got a funnel and uh, caps that fit it. All right, so after you let it drain for a little while and get a good amount out, um, I take a little simple green and just spray it on a rag. Twist it out, just the reverse of the way it went in. And I just wipe it out, put the covers back on it, and that's it. All right, so that's it. So if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments section. I'm gonna leave my email address uh, down below. And if you're interested in buying this or asking any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Thanks for watching.